This Lexus TX is literally a big addition to the Lexus lineup. Not only does Lexus get a new big three row SUV that can legitimately seat adults in the third row, this new vehicle gives Lexus customers the ability to have a third row without paying a ton of money, relatively speaking, for features that they don't really need. Previously, if you wanted a three row SUV from Lexus, you had the old GX, the LX, and then the RX 350L to choose from. All of them are great in their own way, but they're either too small or too expensive if what you really needed was a way to transport a lot of people in comfort. Now that has changed because of this TX. The official trim name of this is, uh, ready? <gasps> The 2024 Lexus TX 500HF Sport Performance Luxury with all-wheel drive. Now the cheapest Lexus TX, which is the non-hybrid TX 350, starts out at $55,050. This hybrid model starts out at $71,300, and after all of the upgrades and delivery, it goes all the way up to $78,169. That still isn't cheap, but considering your Lexus options between the GX and the LX for a three-row SUV, this is a relative bargain if you don't need that full-time four-wheel drive capability. So if you're shopping for a luxury vehicle with a comfortable and roomy third row, the TX is far ahead of the competition. The Acura MDX, Volvo XC90, Audi Q7, BMW X7, they're all nice in their own way, but they have cramped third rows. The Cadillac Escalade ESV has a very roomy third row, but the price of admission is well over a hundred grand. The only real competitor to this Lexus TX is the Toyota version, which if you don't mind the more budget-friendly materials inside and missing some of the real interesting features of this Lexus TX, then it's a real bargain. If you want to see the much cheaper version of this vehicle, then I encourage you to check out the link to my video review up in the corner or in the description box. So here are the exterior features I love about the new Lexus TX. The new grille, I think it looks cool. Lexus looks like it's going through somewhat of an identity crisis right now as it slowly changes the grille designs from that massive hourglass designs that we've seen in the past. The new Lexus GX, that has a smaller, more functional grille. The new RX is doing something strange with its nose, while the Lexus LX is still holding out on the super massive grill design. Now this new grill design is a modern take. It has more of an EV grill influence and it's very distinctive. You see more of the body color. This F Sport has a sportier front bumper design with the blacked out elements for the fog lights and also more brushed aluminum trim. I like the lighting on the Lexus TX. The LED lights are auto leveling. The daytime running lights have that upside down checkmark design. Then there's also fog lights in this model and there's cornering lights that will turn on so you can see better when you're turning into your driveway. At the back, the TX has a single light bar design that is now a new design signature for the Lexus brand, as well as that word Lexus spelled out. And then I love the big wheel design on this. This looks very sporty. These are 22 inch wheels and it's exclusive to the F Sport lineup. With this wheel, you could sort of see the really large calipers on there. They're six piston calipers and that's plenty of stopping power. Overall, I think this is a pretty good looking three row SUV. It looks capable and also luxurious. The paint is called Incognito. It's a chalky type of finish, sort of like Audi's Nardo gray paint and it's exclusive to this F Sport lineup. Now, before we jump inside. If you like these car reviews that are short and to the point, please consider hitting that subscribe button because that's what I'm here to deliver. With that said, let's get going. To get inside, you'll notice that these door handles are static. It's not like a traditional door handle. And there's also a button on the inside here, and that's how you open the door. On the inside, the door handle is also another switch. So you could just push that to open the door, but for a mechanical backup, you could just pull on this twice and that'll open the door. There is a safety benefit to having a design like this, and I'll talk more about that later. And once you're inside, yes, this looks like a nicer version of the Toyota Grand Highlander. The layout is almost the same, but it has Lexus's own twist to things, like the bigger screen that looks more integrated with the dash. And then you see the Lexus steering wheel design here, which has some very nice soft touch buttons that correspond to the things on the heads up display. The gear shifter is of a very similar design to the Toyota Grand Highlander. The cup holders have a more interesting design where you could just completely remove this out of the way and place it somewhere 
somewhere else so that you could place larger things in here. You'll find that all of the cup holders in this car is designed this way. And if you're an inventor or you like to tinker with things, you could potentially make a design with the same interfaces and therefore you could just clip on anything that you want in here. The armrest has a really nice surface to it and this has a split design so that you don't have to bother your passenger to get inside the armrest. I like that you get heated seats, ventilated seats, and also a heated steering wheel. Previously, Lexus had something called Climate Concierge. It was kind of a gimmicky thing, but basically it was a single auto button that controls all of the different climate settings. This still has something like that. You just press it once. They don't call it that anymore, but it just sets auto to everything. Up top, there is a big panoramic sunroof. This offers plenty of light for the first and second row occupants. Now let's jump into the second row and to open this front door, you just press on this button here and it'll unlatch the door for you. The one safety benefit here is that when you're parallel parked and you're trying to open this door into traffic, the Lexus TX can sense the oncoming traffic and if there's a car, it will prevent the unlatching of the door. So that's one safety benefit to this design. The second row has the same door handle design and once you're inside, you can see that this is the captain's chairs configuration. So this can seat up to seven people. I love the leather and the microfiber finish on the seats. And let's jump inside. And here you can find automatic climb controls, also heated seats, ventilated seats for the captain's chairs, a couple of USB ports and more storage options up here. You can also find a 120 volt outlet right below. The venting is all up on the ceiling here and there's also this light. One also has the built-in sunshade, which is always nice. In the center, you find a set of cup holders and this is the same exact design that you could find in the front. So you could completely remove that. You could also remove this center console entirely and just leave it at home. This way you could have easier access to the third row. As for the third row, which is kind of like the whole point of this vehicle, it's really easy to get into. You could just press this button and this will tilt and slide the seat forward slightly so that you could easily get in. And once you're in, you'll find that there's plenty of leg room here at 33.5 inches. I'm five foot eight, so I find that there's plenty of headroom here for myself. Also plenty of leg room, but my favorite part of this Lexus TX seating position is that my knee is not a lot higher than my hip point. So this is a much more relaxed seating position. In other smaller three row SUVs, you'll find that your knee is going to sit a lot higher so that you're just much more cramped. In a long road trip, you're not gonna be happy in those cars. But in this Lexus TX, this feels pretty comfortable. One extra addition, since this third row is powered, you could just easily just raise the backrest there or just lower it. Let's see how far we could lower this. Well, that's, that's pretty good. For the amenities, you have a USB-C port here and also a traditional cup holder. And look here, there's a spot for that cup holder insert from the first and second rows. Let's try to fit one of those things. Let's grab this guy and see if this will fit. Yep, it just clicks right in. And there's also more venting here so that you could be more comfortable. Now to get out, you can just press on this button, press on this button, <laughs> press on this button, please. There it is. And then you can just kind of push this forward and to get out again, you have that door handle that you have to press in. And this door is semi heavy, so it kind of gives it some nice heft, feels like a luxury car. As for the cargo space, the thing about smaller three row SUVs is that not only do you take a hit on the third row comfort, but you also lose out on a lot of cargo space potential in the back. That's not the case in this Lexus TX because with the third row up, you have 20.2 cubic feet of storage back here. This is my 30 liter photography bag. So this is the size of a small check-in bag. So this gives you a frame of reference as to how many of those things you could fit in here. And since these seats are also powered, you could just lower the seat just from the back. Now with the third row in the down position, you get up to 57.4 cubic feet of storage. And with the second row down, you get up to 92 cubic feet of storage in this Lexus TX. If you wanna make Home Depot runs with this thing, you could absolutely do that. You could fit lots of building materials in here, but you can't quite fit a four by eight sheet of plywood just because it's not long enough. You're just gonna to have to seat all the way forward and probably put some of the building materials onto those armrests. And also, even though this is a four foot opening, this bump out on the third row here kind of prevents that. If you have a big sheet that you wanna transport, you're gonna to have to put it over this elbow rest here. 
Now let's talk about the technology and let's first start with this giant 14 inch touchscreen for your infotainment system. This is a nice look. I like this integrated look as opposed to the Toyota Grand Highlanders design, which looks like an iPad that's stuck onto the dash. This is a very big screen, but the real screen element here is really just the top two thirds of it. This is what changes when you go through the different menus. And the lower third of the screen is always showing your climate controls. And I think that's a great thing because you don't wanna be hunting through the different menus to get into your heated seats, ventilated seats, and also all of your climate controls. Some of the more important climate controls like the temperature settings, the front and rear defrosters are all still physical buttons. So that's a great thing. And I also like that there's a volume dial here as well. So that's always a plus. This comes with wireless Apple CarPlay and wireless Android Auto. And since this has the technology package upgrade, it adds the panoramic view monitor. So you could push this button and it'll pull up the 360 degree camera view. If you push this into gear, this will show an overhead view of the car. And on the right hand side, you could kind of toggle between what views are shown there. And also there's this automatic button so that when you're coming to a stop or a crawl, this view will automatically pop up so that you don't have to push this button. Again, just one more convenient thing. The tech package also adds this nice heads up display and this works really nicely with some of the soft touch buttons on the steering wheel. There's one for each spoke and this provides an incredible amount of controls, both for your infotainment controls and also your driving assistance controls. If you don't get the tech package, you'll still get a different set of buttons and they all work very well. This one comes with a wireless charger as well. And I think your experience may vary depending on the type of phone that you have and also your phone case. But what I found is that with my iPhone 14 Pro with the standard Apple leather case, this has charged my phone pretty well during my road trips. When it comes to safety, this has Lexus Safety System 3.0. So it comes with a whole lot of features like adaptive cruise control, lane tracing, blind spot, rear cross traffic alert. Again, this has that safe exit assist feature, which might potentially save you during parallel parking situations. But there is this one interesting addition and it comes in the form of these infrared sensors here on this hump by the steering column. Now, this is something that I've run into with GM cars equipped with Super Cruise or Ford with Blue Cruise. And that's a level two advanced driving assistance system, which has adaptive cruise control and also lane keeping systems like in most cars, but those systems provide completely hands-free driving as long as you're traveling on a known road, normally on highways. Now this Lexus TX seems to have the same type of hardware because these infrared sensors is constantly tracking your face to make sure that you're paying attention to the road and you don't have your eyes closed. I know this because when I wear sunglasses, this would think sometimes that I have my eyes closed. And in addition to that, this has all of the smart sensors. This could trace the lanes pretty well. This has adaptive cruise control, so it has all of those systems in place, but you just have to keep your hands on the wheel. You could just kind of like rest it on here and it works very reliably. So hopefully maybe we're a few years away from Toyota rolling something out that will compete with GM Super Cruise or Ford Blue Cruise. But overall, as for technology, there's plenty to find in here. I think Toyota and Lexus cars are typically slower to adapt tech features, but these cars have the latest and greatest tech, and I think you're gonna be pretty satisfied with what you find in this vehicle. Okay, now let's get to driving this thing. This Lexus TX500H has the same powertrain as the Toyota Grand Highlander Hybrid Max. It has a 2.4 liter four cylinder turbocharged engine with a hybrid system. So it makes a total of 366 horsepower with 406 pound feet of torque. That's a small power bump over the Grand Highlander Hybrid Max. This Lexus TX has a little bit more weight to carry around, so this one has a slightly different engine too. Zero to 60 is about the same with the Toyota version, and it's around six seconds. That's pretty quick for a big SUV. That hybrid system is attached to a six-speed automatic. Now, you may think, why doesn't this have an eight or 10-speed transmission like other cars? I can't really say, but considering that this is a hybrid, it still gets pretty good gas mileage for this size car. 27 miles per gallon in the city, 28 in the highway, and 27 miles per gallon combined. And Lexus recommends 91 octane premium fuel. 
The power delivery is very good. The electric motor gives you that instant torque. And then the turbo engine keeps that momentum at full boost in the mid-range. As for the ride quality, it's pretty great. It's representative of a Lexus, so it's very plush and quiet. Steering feels pretty good for the type of vehicle. It's light and has plenty of boost from the electrical power steering system. The one other big difference between this Lexus TX500H is the addition of the dynamic rear steering system. The rear axle is able to slightly turn, so when you're in low speed situations, it could tighten the turning circle. And when in high speed situations, it'll make the car feel more maneuverable. This Lexus TX also has the direct for all wheel drive system. So the rear axle is driven by an electric motor, just like other modern Toyota and Lexus front wheel drive biased all wheel drive systems where there is no mechanical drive shaft controlling the rear axle. So this improves gas mileage in the long run while still having all wheel drive capability when you need it. Handling wise, it's really not bad for a big three row SUV. These new cars with modern chassis are so much stiffer and with the smaller motors and the hybrid systems that distribute the powertrain a little better along the vehicle, this offers a better balance in handling compared to older SUVs. So this new Lexus TX is a great three row vehicle for Lexus because previously, if you wanted a three row SUV, you had the Lexus RX 350L, which was the long wheelbase version of the normal RX 350. And that was a fine car, but the third row was still a little bit on the cramped side. And then you had the old GX, which is a fantastic off-roader that also had a third row. And then you have the Lexus LX, another body on frame SUV, full-time four wheel drive, which is, awesome for off-roading but the third row is still a bit on the cramped side and it's very expensive so now if you wanted to get into a three-row vehicle and you don't need all of that off-road capability and you don't want to spend as much money as the Lexus LX or the Lexus GX well, now you have this Lexus TX, which is perfect for on-road situations. This TX 550H is still a little bit on the expensive side, but if you get into the TX 350, that starts out at $55,000. And if you want a more compelling value than this Lexus TX, then check out my video review of the Toyota Grand Highlander Hybrid Max, because you get pretty much the same car, different materials inside, and you also lose out on that rear steer, which makes the car feel a lot smaller and more nimble. But if you don't have to live with those things, then the Toyota Grand Highlander might just be the right one for you. I wanna thank you so much for watching all the way up to this point. If you haven't already, please consider hitting that subscribe and I'll see you in the next one.